Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and who needs cool transitions when you can just shove the box in front of the camera like that? Uh, but this is actually pretty special because this is the new Realme 8 5G. Uh, in fact, here it is. Here's one I made earlier. And this guy starts from just £199, which is ridiculously cheap for a 5G phone. So let's get into it. And here we are with the famous Realme yellow box. And the headline specs include this new Dimensity 700 5G chip, a 90 hertz screen, a big 5,000 million power battery, and also a 48 megapixel triple camera setup. Now as for the phone itself, we get a good size 6.5 inch screen. I've got the supersonic blue model here, which is very snazzy looking, there's also a black. And it is kind of cool that as the light hits it, you have this almost 3D effect. It is plastic and it picks up smudges fairly easily, but I quite like it. And actually, if I bring in its siblings, the uh, standard Realme 8 and also the 8 Pro, you can see the 5G model here is the only one without the big kind of garish dare to leap slogan and also that dual tone design. But which one do you think looks best out of the three? Now side by side, you can see the 5G model is a little bit thicker and heavier than the other two. At 8.5 millimeters, it's about half a mil thicker than the 8. And you'll also notice what looks like a similar quad camera setup, but the top right lens is, well, actually not a lens at all. It just says AI, which is maybe a little bit misleading at first glance. Elsewhere, we have a fingerprint reader built into the power button, a single speaker on the bottom, no dual speakers, unfortunately, but we do have a three and a half mil headphone jack. And if I pop this open, you see that we have a three card tray. So you can pop in up to two 5G SIM cards and a micro SD. So you can actually boost the storage by a further one terabyte for all of your 4K poor um, family movies. I've used that joke like three times now. I've got to stop doing that. And then up front, we have this hole punch cutout for the selfie camera, which also supports face unlocking. But as you can see, it is a little bit bigger than the one on the 8 and the 8 Pro. It really does seem like every decision Realme has made with this phone is to make it as aggressively affordable as possible. Because actually, compared to last year's Realme 7 5G, on paper at least, this is actually a bit of a step down. Last year's phone had 120Hz, faster charging, a quad camera setup, but it was £280 at launch. Although, of course, since then, the 7 5G has been discounted, so the difference between uh, that and this isn't as significant anymore. But if 5G is important to you, presumably to make your phone a bit more future-proof, and you're also on a very tight budget, then this is incredible value. And it's in part thanks to being one of the first phones to come with MediaTek's new Dimensity 700 chip. It's definitely a mid-range processor, but it's actually fairly capable. To give you an idea, if I bring in the Geekbench and the 3 d Mark results for all three 8-series phones, the 5G actually has the fastest CPU, although not by an awful lot. And it does also fall behind the standard Realme 8's Helio G95 in the graphics department. But still, it ran Call of Duty smoothly on medium-high settings, although Genshin Impact, which is to be fair one of the most demanding games on mobile right now, was playable, but with the occasional frame drop and stutter. However, the entry-level model of the 8 5G comes with just 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, which is kind of understandable, I suppose, given the price, but it is weird to see a 5G phone with just 4 gigs of RAM. They're usually kind of like mutually exclusive because generally you expect a 5G phone to be quite high spec, but this is kind of flipping that on its head. I think I would probably pay a little bit more and get this with 6 gigs of RAM, just makes it a little bit more future-proof, especially maybe if you are buying this for its future-proof 5G capabilities, and then you can always just drop in a uh, micro SD as well to expand the storage. But overall, it felt fast, and that was helped by the latest Android 11 and Realme UI 2 software, which I actually do quite like, and there's tons of customization options. But what really helps to make this feel faster is the 90 hertz refresh rate screen. So here we are again, kind of having to balance and make a decision between whether you want an AMOLED 60 hertz screen like you get on the standard Realme 8 or a 90 hertz LCD that we have on the 5G model. Personally, I think it's more valuable to have a 90 hertz refresh. I think you see that more often than you do an AMOLED screen, which does give you better contrast ratios, better viewing angles, but if you're using this 
at a reasonable sort of straight on angle. You're not using it, you know, from the side and you're not, you know, just concentrating on the black bars around the video. Generally in day to day, you can't really tell that much difference. And it still looks good. It's an IPS uh, and we have up to 600 nits of brightness. So it's easily usable outside. But what do you reckon? Would you rather go 90 Hertz LCD or 60 Hertz AMOLED? If you had to pick, let me know in the comments below. Although of course we would all love both in an ideal world. But the benefit of having a 90 Hz refresh and 180 Hz touch sampling is the phone feels much smoother and more responsive. You can choose to keep it at 90 Hz all the time, but I like to keep it in auto mode so it adapts based on the app and should therefore save you a bit of battery. Now unfortunately where I live in the middle of nowhere in the southwest of England, we don't have 5G here yet, so I can't really test uh, just how fast it can get and also the impact on the battery life, although we do have some 5G battery saving modes built in. Uh, but in my experience, generally using this with 4G and Wi-Fi, I'm getting to about 11pm at night with 30% remaining, which is pretty good, and also one hour of YouTube at 50% brightness used 8% of the battery life. So the battery life is good, although if you are using 5G, that will have an impact on that as well. But the downside really is the charger. We get this 18 watt charger in the box, which is actually a downgrade from the 30 watt charger we get with the Realme 8 or even last year's Realme 7 5G had 30 watt charging. So um, bit of a bit of a strange choice going down to 18 here. Again, I guess it's cost saving. Now let's talk about this camera. And a bit sadly, we have lost the ultra wide lens, which uh, we get on the 8 and the 8 Pro, but we do still have a 48 megapixel main camera, plus a macro lens, and also a black and white portrait lens, which is designed to improve the quality and also the bokeh of portrait shots. You do of course have to adjust your expectations for a phone that costs just 180 pounds, but I think on the whole, it does a good job. You can shoot in the full 48 megapixels if you want the highest resolution, there's also a pro mode if you want to tinker, and the ultra macro. Although as usual, these tacton macro lenses don't really add a whole lot of value in my opinion. We do get a decent night mode though, which actually works with both the rear and the selfie cameras, which is always good to see. Although low light photos can still be a little bit noisy and it does struggle with dynamic range. Having said that, I think again, given the price, it's good enough as a quick point and shoot. And I do also quite like the selfie camera. It can lack a little bit in sharpness and detail, but the exposure and the colors look good. And this is with all the AI beautification modes turned off. Although perhaps I should have kept them on. And so that is the new Realme 8 5G. The good stuff, well, we're getting incredibly cheap 5G, uh, good battery life, that triple card slot with micro SD, dual SIM 5G, uh, three and a half mil headphone jack, which is nice. I think it looks pretty good as well. And of course that 90 Hertz screen. So all in all, a pretty good all round phone with a ridiculously affordable price. Downsides, well, it's LCD. Uh, there's no ultra wide camera. And also bizarrely, we've had a, a downgrade in the charging speed. But overall, if you want a solid, dirt cheap 5G phone, while well, there are a couple of compromises, you can't really get much better than this. Although if you're not that bothered by 5G just yet, and frankly, I still don't know if it's really essential, especially at this price point, then I'd recommend going with the standard Realme 8. It's only 60 Hertz, but we do get an AMOLED screen. The Helio G95 chip is better for gaming. We also get a high resolution 64 megapixel camera and an ultra wide lens, along with an in-screen fingerprint reader and also faster charging. My only feedback really is that the difference between the 7 and the 8 series perhaps isn't as clear cut as it should be. It's a little bit complicated. Now, if you fancy checking this out for yourself, I'll leave links below. And also, as I say, Realme are running some really good launch deals right now. So get in early if you fancy an upgrade. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy this? And also, do you think it's worth having 5G uh, at this price point or well, is it just a bit of a costly extra? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you did enjoy the video and want to see more of me, which hopefully you do, then a cheeky little subscribe and a thumbs up would be lovely. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Jam.